The Founding Fathers established this country in part for the purpose of freedom of religion. It was a new ideal. Yet today, America seems bent on a quest toward freedom from religion. Well, as we celebrate our nation's Independence Day, we must not forget the God who enables us to pursue life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Today's teaching offers salvation for America's independence from God. Rapture Ministries is proud to present Update with founder and president, Bill Harris. Hello, I'm Bill Harris of Rapture Ministries and welcome to Update. When those 100 or so pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock back in 1620, they sought freedom from the Church of England to worship God according to the scriptures. Now through the years and over the centuries, Americans produced documents proclaiming the sovereignty of God over this country's ideals and values. Our Pledge of Allegiance declares that we are one nation under God. On our money is inscribed the words, in God we trust. Now, let there be no misunderstanding. Those early Americans fought for freedom of religion. Today, our sophisticated society seeks for freedom from religion using the fundamental argument that separation of church and state is what it's all about. Well, what proponents of that argument really want is separation of God and state, which really is not the same. Observe how we have changed God's absolute standards and now tolerate that which was never right by saying it is sometimes right, depending on the circumstances. It's called situation ethics. In some, if you can't be with the one you love, then love the one you're with. Now, Bible scholars argue, and rightfully so, that our nation's courts, which used to judge against immorality, now grant man the freedom to do what is right in his own eyes, just like it was in the Old Testament. And this brought about the scripture that I'd like to read to you where God had to say in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 19 and 20, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursing. And then God gives us his highest and best advice. He says, therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live. Now, isn't that interesting? God is wanting us to live. God is not wanting us to die. And sin brings about death. I said on old two or three programs ago how that sin separates man from God and it becomes a spiritual death. Let me say this about America on this Independence Day weekend. We as a nation have a death grip on death. And that is because we're reaching out and we're just grabbing sin, wholesale sin, and, and with sin goes consequences. I don't mean this as a put down. I mean this to say that we have to save this nation. I mean to say that we have got to look to God, the one who brought about the freedom and the justice and the peace that we have here, the pursuit of life and liberty and happiness. God brought all this about. And it wasn't just because we fought battles and the like, it was because God was with us in those battles. And so now here we are at the point where as a nation, just like Israel, we can choose life or death. We can choose blessing or cursing. And God giving us his highest and best advice says choose life. Choose life. This is what he wants us to do. Now in uh, verse 20 it says that thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave. And now cleave means to, 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 to glue or to cement. Cleave unto him for he is thy life. Listen to this, America. God is our life. It is not our constitution. It is not our system of government. God is our life. And it is not our money. It is not our military might. And the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. God is saying that he is our life and he is our life giver. Now look at this graphic where God tells us to choose life. It says he wants us to choose to love him. This is what is so key. 
We must choose to love him. Secondly, we must, as a nation, choose to obey him. And thirdly, we must choose to cling to him. And when the Bible talks about clinging and, and to cleave, that word means glue. It means cement. It means to be bonded to him. I want to talk with you about a, a, a man in the Bible who was living the American dream before there ever was an America. It was a man in the Old Testament by the name of King Solomon. And he had it all. He had the fame, the fortune, and the women. Um, he was known throughout the land as the wisest man in his generation. He was rich beyond imagination. And he acquired for himself 300 wives and 700 concubines. You name it, Solomon had it. Money, sex, and power. He had it, the American dream. Uh, to give him modern day perspective, one Christian psychologist referred to Solomon as having the brilliance of Albert Einstein and the fortune of John D. Rockefeller and the lavish lifestyle of Playboy, Playboy publisher Hugh Hefner. Uh, look at what Solomon said to himself. Let me read this to you. Solomon said this about his own achievements. He said, I made my works great. I built myself houses and planted myself vineyards. I made myself water pools. I mean, this man had a lavish lifestyle back in the Old Testament. I had greater possessions of herds and flocks. And, you know, this is a symbol of wealth. And then all of those in Israel or Jerusalem before me, he said, I also gathered for myself silver and gold and the special treasures of kings and provinces. I acquired male and female singers. Look at the entertainment here. And the delights of the sons of men and musical instruments of all kinds. So I became great and excelled more than all who were before me in Jerusalem. Also, he says, my wisdom remained with me. Whatever, get this line, get this, whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. Whatever Solomon wanted, he, he got it. Indeed, he had it all. However, as time went on, Solomon began to put his life into perspective. And I want you to listen to the conclusions as he became an older person, the conclusions that he arrived to about life. He said, the abundance of the rich, the abundance of the rich will not permit him to sleep. And he said, he who loves silver will not be satisfied with silver. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and indeed all is vanity and grasping after the wind. So you can see here that the American dream is not what it's all about and what God wants us to do. What God wants us to do is embrace his dream and embrace his standards of life. God wants us to know that salvation for America's independence comes from God. We're looking to military might. We're looking to the stock market to go up. You know, we're looking to all kinds of deals to be done in smoke filled rooms that will propel America ahead. But that's not the way it's going to happen. It's going to be because we turn as a nation back to God and allow him to come into our lives. He is the one who will bring salvation and deliverance for this group of people called America. We've got to look to him. Now, when we come back, I want to share with you some of the marvelous things that God has in store for America, because it's, it's not all doom and gloom, but it all depends on our decisions as to whether we want life or death or whether we want blessing or cursing. And it's up to you and me to make the decision. If America is to continue on as the greatest country this world has ever known, it will have to fess up to its sins and turn away from its gods of immorality and secular humanism. And if we do so, God's love and mercy will save us. I'll talk about more in a moment. Are we living in the last days? How can you be so sure? Bill Harris's anointed seminar on the end times addresses these and other questions like what happens during the rapture? What will happen to those left behind? How will the Antichrist rule as the world dictator? And does the current Middle East conflict signal that the end is near? Bill's travels to Israel when he was a two-time Emmy award-winning television news reporter 
coupled with his Bible school and seminary education, give him a unique perspective on world history, current events, and Bible prophecy as he declares the accuracy of Bible predictions about these last days before Jesus Christ returns. His exciting and revealing presentation on the end times covers such topics as the rapture of the church, the tribulation period, and the millennial reign of Christ. You will also see a profile of the Antichrist. Hear about the current Middle East conflict in the context of ancient Bible prophecies to learn where we are in prophecy today and much, much more. Would you like for Bill to bring this exciting, powerfully anointed presentation to your church or group? Contact us at Rapture Ministries, Post Office Box 948, Holland, Ohio 43528. That's Rapture Ministries, Post Office Box 948, Holland, Ohio 43528. Or you can call us at 419-517-9292. That's 419-517-9292. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34, teaches us that righteousness lifts up a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any society. Now, this scripture and others document the fact that God fully expects a nation and its people to honor him with righteous living. And he warns that the sins of people bear undeniably grave consequences. We, sin, we, we, we seem to think that as a nation, we, we can do our own thing and ignore where God has brought us from. I think the danger for us as Americans is greater in the fact that we once knew God. If we could plead ignorance and say we never knew God and embraced his values to begin with, uh, that might create a different situation. It, it still wouldn't um, preclude us from being judged. But when you know God and, and you go away from that and you know right from wrong and you still do wrong, uh, the consequences are even more severe. That's, that's what God's law provides. And so God's law also provides mercy for us and God wants to heal our land. He really does. It isn't that God wants to stand over this country with a baseball bat ready to club us down. He's not that kind of God, but sin bears consequences. Where there is sin, there have to be consequences. And so the Lord really wants to help us to avoid more consequences. And we see sin on every level of society. Now, um, I, have, I have a scripture here that I want to read that I think is the basis for this entire sermon. It is Isaiah chapter 33, verse 22. And I want to put the rest of the, I want to put the emphasis on this for the rest of the, uh, the message today. It says, for the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. And this is speaking, this is national talk here. This is not about individuals. This is national talk. Now, in this graph, let me show you what, what the scripture, let's break this down and show you what we're talking about. The Lord is our judge. And a judge, of course, is to pronounce sentence, to vindicate, or to govern. And the Lord will do that in this country. Secondly, it says the Lord is our lawgiver and the lawgiver, of course, is the one who, enact, who enacts laws. And thirdly, it says the Lord is our king and that kingship represents royalty. Now, this next graphic, I want us to take a look at it in a closer manner because let's bring this home to our nation. We looked at it scripturally. The Lord is our judge. That's what the scripture is saying. In our country, that's the judicial branch of government, the Supreme Court. Secondly, the Lord is our lawgiver. In this country, that's the legislative branch of government, our Congress, the House and Senate. And thirdly, the Lord is our king. In this country, we don't have a king, but we have a president. So that is the executive branch of government for us. Now, and then the concluding part is he will save us. That's the bottom line. He will save us. But this only happens if we turn to him. You know, it, it, it's, it's not that we could expect a theocracy, theocracy that is, because when the Lord comes back, he will set up his own theocracy. And that's the government that will be ruled by God himself. But in the government that we have in existence now, God wants to enter into that. The Bible says the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord and God wants to rule through the leaders of any of any society, of any country. 
God wants to rule so that his values and his value system are permeating throughout that society for the betterment of the people. And on this Independence Day, what I see happening, as I mentioned in the first segment, is America has a death grip on death because sin brings about death. And in this case, I don't mean the physical death per se. There, there are a lot of physical deaths as a result of sin. But death meaning separation from God. That's one definition of death, separation from God. Now this thing about separation of, uh, between church and state, which is really tantamount to separation of God and state because we don't want God. That separation is what leads to death. And America is reaching out and grabbing death. We have a death grip on death because of sin running rampant in this country. And now we're compromising and we're saying that which used to be never right is sometimes right, whatever the circumstances may happen to be. And again, that's that situation ethics. And so we've got to honor God and his word and let our yea be yea and our nay be nay. God offers salvation for this nation. He offers salvation for this nation. And it's greater than the independence that we like to talk about. Yes, we have the greater independence from the old days of the country of England. But now our independence is being compromised simply because we're losing God's values. And those things that become the founding pillars of our country are being washed away from shore to shore. And because they're being washed away and ungodly things are happening in this earth, we can't get away with that. You can't get away with making marijuana legal and selling it as a recreational drug. Can't get away with that. You know, marijuana is not nature's way of saying hi. You can't get away with it. You can't get away with killing unborn babies in the womb and the mother saying, well, it's her body because there's another body inside there that God has brought forth. She may have figured it was a mistake and wants to get rid of it, but that's not the way God is looking at it. And we've ultimately got to look at it God's way, not our way. And so it's more than political. And I want to stop to say it's more than political uh, in terms of Democrats versus Republicans, because there's political corruption on both sides of the political aisle. And if we are looking to one party over the other for answers and for redemption and salvation, it's not going to come that way. We're going to be disappointed because both parties are of the strength in the arm of man, not the arm of God. And so we have to really understand that it is God who wants to rule in the hearts of men and wants to bring about justice in our society and who really wants to bring about life where there is death. We can't go about saying that it's okay for a man to marry a man and a woman to marry a woman and, and say there have to be rights to allow this and there have to be rights to allow it to be taught to our children in school when we know that it is against God's order. Now, if an individual wants to live that lifestyle, they have the right to choose that lifestyle because God says, I put before you life and death, you know, blessing and cursing. You make the decision. You make the choice. If an individual wants to live that way, that is up to them and they should not be discriminated against because they choose to live in sin. If, if it's that's homosexuality or whatever you want to call it. But when we want to fashion it into national law and make it a part of the agenda of an entire nation, then God has something to say about that. You see, because now we're pushing, now we're pushing our next generation into this and they will come up believing that this is natural and that it is normal. That the same thing with killing unborn babies, that it is natural and normal. Marijuana for recreational use, that it is natural and normal. And I'm just mentioning just, just, I'm just highlighting three of the major sins that we always talk about in this nation. Certainly there are others. I mean, look at, look at, look at gambling. I mean, the casinos across this country uh, are all over the place. And we cannot exist as a strong nation having known God and then reduce ourselves to do that which we know that is wrong and calling it right and expect that we're going to exist as a country. Same with fornication and adultery. You cannot lie down in the bed in between the sheets with sin all night and get up the next morning expecting to be clean. It can't happen. 
we have to know that God has a better way for us. And it's not political. It's not politics. That's not the answer. Yes, Christians need to permeate the political society on both sides of the political aisle, but the answer is not politics. The answer is God and a righteous lifestyle in him. And the answer is for ministers of the gospel laying down their political gauntlets, whether they be Republican and, or a Democrat, and going after the purity of God's word to save this country. Because the Democrats are not going to do it, and the Republicans are not going to do it, and the Independents are not going to do it. You have to have changed hearts and changed minds, and you have to have God in the forefront, not the political agenda. And God will save the country in a day when we can do that. And he has told us on many occasions that if we would honor him as, an, as a nation and as a country, he will honor us. God has great things in store for this country, even beyond that which we have known over the last 200 or so years that we have been in existence. How could this country have risen to be the nation that it is today without God? How could it have done so without the acknowledgement of God that we have had? This is what has made this country great. Despite all of its attendant problems, whether it be problems of race, whether it be problems of uh, division between denominations, whatever those issues may be, we have risen to be a great country. But if we allow sin to continue to abound, we're going to see the washing away of everything that makes this country great. And it doesn't have to be that way. That's, I want to leave you with that thought. It doesn't have to be this way because God has a better way for this country and he has a better way for the individuals in this country. You know, Jesus gave us what he called the two greatest commandments. Over and above the Ten Commandments that were given to Moses by God, Jesus said that if we are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and body, and strength, and we are to love our neighbor as ourselves, and on these two commandments, he said, hang the law and the prophets. These are the greatest two commandments. And if we as a country and nation could have revival to permeate our society so that the love of God and the love for each other could permeate our society, love God, love your fellow man, we will see changes in this country in a day, you know? Taking prayer out of schools is another area that we have seen that has been replaced by all of the violence in our schools these days. I can remember when you could be expelled from school for just smoking regular cigarettes on the campus. I can remember when you could be expelled from school for throwing a spitball across the room. But now they're going to school with guns and they have to go through metal detectors just to get into the classroom. And, and, and we're talking about we, we want to take prayer out of schools and here come the guns and here come the drugs. We need to think common sense here and think about what's happening in this country and note the fact that it doesn't have to be. This is a great country. This is not some second rate country. People are not uh, jumping in boats trying to get to the shores of other nations. They're jumping in boats trying to get to this country because of how great it is but we stand the chance of losing out on how great we are because of sin. That one little thing of sin can destroy us from within. We don't have to worry about somebody coming from foreign shores to invade this country. We will destroy ourselves. And so revival has to take place. Those of you that do not know the Lord and the pardoning of your sins, I invite you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and let him begin to give you new life and a new lifestyle. Because this lifestyle that you're living, it takes you out of here quick. There are just as many young graves almost as there are whole graves out there in the graveyard these days. People are dying younger. Why is it? It's because of the sin and degradation of our society. Sin kills. Satan has come to steal and to kill and to destroy in this country. But Jesus has come to give us abundant life, abundant life. And it's ours simply for the asking if we will allow revival to begin in us. Each person, let revival begin in us and let it permeate through our entire society. And God will change the nation in a day. That's my independence message for you today. 
I may have offended some, I don't mean to, but I hope that I let you know that this is a great country, but God above all, God above all. That's our message for today. I'll come back to wrap things up in just a moment. From the beginning, God established the family as the foundation for the human race. Yet society has redefined marriage in the family today, creating confusion and a decline of family values. Bill's seminar entitled Marriage and Family Life is designed as a counter-offensive to the tremendous social, political, and spiritual attacks on the family today. Individual workshops include such topics as the role of the husband and wife, parent-child relations, authority and discipline in the home, youth and morality, bitterness and forgiveness, living single, divorced or widowed, and sexual happiness in marriage. Bill has presented this seminar in numerous settings, including churches, retreats, conferences, Sunday school meetings. He has also been an advocate for the family in testimony before the White House Conference on Families and the White House Conference on a Drug-Free America. Would you like for Bill to bring this exciting, powerfully anointed presentation to your church or group? Contact us at Rapture Ministries, Post Office Box 948, Holland, Ohio, 43528. That's Rapture Ministries, Post Office Box 948, Holland, Ohio, 43528. Or you can call us at 419-517-9292. That's 419-517-9292. Well, I certainly hope you are set for a terrific Independence Day holiday celebration. We do have a lot in this country to celebrate despite all the attendant problems. But I hope and pray that this message gets to you and others in the communities where it's being broadcast because God loves America and he loves you and me. Now, before we leave you today, a couple of books that I want to talk about. Uh, one written by my daughter, Sonia Denise, a book on child safety called Saved by a Whistle. This is a book to uh, teach children not to get in the car with strangers. Go to kidshaveavoice.com, and Sonia has much information there about child safety, including, of course, an area where you can order that book through that website, kidshaveavoice.com. Now, the second book that I'd like to talk to you about, uh, a book along my heart uh, concerning marriage and the family. It's a book entitled, You May Now Kiss the Bride. This book is written by Jim Riccatelli, who's a board member of Rapture Ministries for 33 years now. Go to uh, Bethany, JMR dot, uh, no, Bethany, JMR at AOL dot com. You can order that book for $15 plus shipping and handling. You May Now Kiss the Bride. Now, as we leave you today, we'd like to encourage those of you that would like to partner with us to, to do so. You can contact us uh, by the information on the screen. Those of you that would be interested in having my wife Ann and me come and minister at your church or group, we'd love to do that. You can contact us again at the information on the screen. We'd love to come and be with you. Just finished up two Sundays um, at uh, the Summerfield Baptist Church in Temperance, Michigan. We were there for two Sundays uh, this month. And uh, we'll be back again next month, and I'll be able to give you the uh, dates for that coming up for July. So in any event, we'd love to be a part of your setting and to worship with you all. Just give us a call and let us know. That's our program for today. We'll be back again next week at this same time. Until then, I'm Bill Harris of Rapture Ministries. Have a pleasant day. <music>